Okay, so I wanted to uh, welcome you all to DEF CON 25. I'm really curious, show of hands. I know it's not perfect, but this hotel compared to Paris Bally's, who likes this one better? <laughs> okay. I'm glad you like it because we're here next year. <laughs> If you didn't like it, I don't know what I would have done. And I, I am told that the escalators will be fixed by next year. <laughs> um, so before we get going, I just want to start acknowledging um, a lot of the hard work a lot of us went through to, to make this event happen. Um, and some of you might have seen a tweet about the, uh, the, the drama we had with the bean bags. These are the last two surviving bean bags uh, right near. The, the others have been kidnapped or bean mapped or something. Um, so he's going to take this bean bag, swirl it over his head and throw it in the audience on this side and uh, just give you a heads up. I don't want a lawsuit. So somebody on this side will be the proud owner of a bean bag. And uh, somebody on this side will be a proud owner of a bean bag. Here we go. And this is to, uh, this will be the second year that we have had all of our bean bags disappear. <laughs> Go for it. No, you're going to throw them. You're closer to the, uh, the people. <laughs> oh, right on. Okay, Paul? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Let's see how far you can hurl the. So some of you might have noticed that we weren't up to our normal standard of super cool badges this year because of a, a, an emergency uh, with Lost Boy, which is we really wish him good luck. Um, and uh, I don't know if you saw the we uh, bring back Lost badges that were going around. So I've been talking to Lost. He's he's all in. So don't worry. Next year we should be enjoying some masterful Lost electronic construction. So that'll be good. But it really turned out that um, badge life really became a thing this year. It really seemed to be the tipping point. And so even though we didn't have a super construction, other people did. And I really want to just call out DEF CON 25 I think was really the birth of this badge life. So that was awesome. Everybody who's designed a badge, give it up to them. It's always tricky every year because we have, as you know, we don't do pre-registration, so we don't know how many people to expect, how much to buy. It's really like a, a lot of guessing. Um, and so this year we completely sold out and we want to really thank Swag team working really hard. We, we moved more inventory on Thursday than we did on Thursday and Friday last year. So it was just really worked out to be pretty popular. And of course the shirts that we didn't think would be popular were popular. And vice versa. And uh, the speaker control team really chipped in and helped out so I just want to acknowledge how a lot of these teams work together and it's just a great community. <clears throat> this is how many goons it takes to pull off an event this size. It takes us back in world domination headquarters planning about ten months out of the year and these are all the teams that uh, manage and operate the con. And there's over 380 goons to pull this off. So if you're a goon, stand up and let's acknowledge your awesome. <laughs> right on. I want to see. If you organized a contest, an event, or a party that any attendee could enjoy, stand up because you're the ones that gave us all the enjoyable action. Yeah. All right. And this being Las Vegas, um, where they're very concerned about safety and security, 
I've just been informed that the fire marshal would like us to stay in our seats. <laughs> so we will now be waving our hands, or maybe like the IETF we'll just snap our fingers or hum loudly. If you are a goon that is either a first year goon or a retiring goon, let's just have you wave your hands. <laughs> Thank you. We try to make it really easy at DEF CON for people to come and go and so we try to make it easy for you to help out and if you get busy with life or burned out or you need to move some other country and you can't quite attend, it's okay. Right? People come and go through DEF CON and we try to make it as easy as possible for people to contribute when and where they can contribute. And so um, I just would like to thank those that of those who are retiring uh, I just want to acknowledge all their past contributions because that's really valuable and it really helped get us here. I mean, we're really on the shoulders of giants. Also this year, the Hacker Tracker app became official. It is now an official DEF CON app and we're helping provide them some support. Okay. Who here downloaded this thing and really thought it was useful? Yeah, this is awesome. We're just going to keep growing it and we're going to do what we can to provide them support and next year it'll be just that much better. So I think uh, that's really uh, been uh, really, really cool. Okay, so I'm going to pass the microphone off. We're going to give you the quick lowdown on what's been going on with the knock this year. Luis is going to talk about some great new equipment we had and he'll run through some statistics. So Luis. Thanks, Jeff. Hello, DEF CON 25. It's awesome to be here. I've been on my phone because I heard the streaming was down, but now it's up. Thanks, Video Man. So, just gonna go through some slides. Uh, this is mostly for uh, historic purpose. And we, so you can download from DEF CON networking.org later to see the statistics. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. But if you don't know what we do here, the NOC does the whole wired infrastructure. Uh, which is listed on your left. And then for most of you, what matters is, and the brave, and the ones that patch their phones for Wi-Fi vulnerabilities, um, is the, the wireless network. And there's, we're gonna talk a little bit about those. And DCTV, we also do that. Uh, Video Man and Serif, they do a great job uh, making it work and trying to keep it working. That's been the, one of the challenges we had this year and we appreciate the patience that you guys have with us. So a quick rundown on the network. Um, we have a 10 gig backbone uh, within the hotel. The hotel is awesome. Uh, the hotel IT and Encore staff, that is the company that helps the hotel and us, they are, I cannot express how much uh, we appreciate their job. So please give a hand to, to hand out to them. <laughs> As for the gear that we have, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. As I said, you can download this later. Uh, but we have a whole bunch of stuff. We have some enterprise class stuff and some non-enterprise enterprise class. Things that we make everything work. Uh, want to point out the wireless. We've been using a 7210 Aruba controller. And last year, as you can see the, the, the second line there, we had a whole bunch of different AP models and stuff. This year, we, uh, Aruba facilitated for us uh, 75 new APs. So this year, we deployed 69 APs throughout the convention center. Um, and we had some spot, spotting coverage and stuff like that. But uh, thanks, Aruba, for helping us for the long time. DCT. As for DCTV, last year, if you remember, or if you download the presentation from last year, we were using Raspberry Pis. This year, we changed to old droids. And the number, the odd number there, uh, is because we were streaming to Paris in Bally's, which is going to be on the issues uh, slide. But it's, it worked. It was the first year. Um, it's going to get better. This is our network design. You can look at it later. <laughs> Okay. 
So DCTV, as you know, uh, we had last year was the first time we were uh, streaming on in HD. HD. Uh, so we capped that. Uh, that makes the, the end the little devices that make the conversion sometimes a little upset and overheat and lock up. But we're gonna keep doing that. It looks nice. I had a chance to watch a little bit on my TV uh, in the hotel. And we had this year, so five channels here at Caesars and four channels at the other hotels for because of uh, hardware limitations beyond our control. This is the timeline. We showed up on a couple of us on Saturday, start working on Sunday. And for the first time ever, by Wednesday night, we had everything done. Everything that was on the list. <laughs> then Thursday shows up, and then we have the last minute requests that are very uh, usual. And it's, uh, it's good that we got stuff done before so we can cater uh, those that are like room changes. There's, there's a lot of things when we show up on site, not only us from the knock, but everyone here. Then the dynamic is good. Love the dynamic of working with all the groups, the other goon groups. It's been a great year for us. And now we're on Sunday, we're gonna tear down and tomorrow we go home and start planning for next year. Issues, bandwidth. I love that you guys use a lot of bandwidth, but um, that's one of the issues that we have and we're gonna try to fix that in the future. Right, Jeff? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> Jeff says yes. Um, and DCTV, we have like a combination of things, right? When we try new things, it's very hard to uh, sometimes pinpoint the problem, uh, but we work hard, as I said before, Video Man and Serif, they do a great job and I really appreciate what, what, what they do to make sure that this is going on, right? This is going on the internet right now. So for those that couldn't be here, it's awesome to be able to, to send this information to them. And yes, that IP address is from that movie back in the 90s. Um, Wi-Fi stuff. Um, amazingly enough, like clients, people really like to jump on the open network and do bad things or not so good things. And, but almost half or more than half use the, the secure network and we have the Wi-Fi reg and stuff. It's very interesting to see on the destination that people use, you're still here and using Facebook. I hope you're, I hope you're posting things that you're learning <laughs> during the conference. Not gonna go through the numbers here, but we used, um, I was lazy and I used the slides from last year, so you can see that we used a little bit of inbound traffic. We went up as expected, since we have more people. Outbound, also a little bit more, but not too much. And the most important part here was that for the first time ever, we had more than 2,000 users on the wireless at the same time, so that's pretty awesome. This is our team, the breakdown. We have 12 people total for doing a conference this size. It's pretty amazing. Uh, shout out to our, our new member of the team, uh, Nancy, and she's awesome. She brought a lot of good energy to the grumpy guys that we are, so that's good. And we also invited Richard Cheese to be part of the team, but he was busy preparing for his show. Really special thanks to Jeff. He, anytime I need to jump on a call and get stuff resolved, he helps a lot. Sherelle, without you, this wouldn't be possible. Will, for getting, buying all the stuff that we request, or almost all the stuff that we request, but we, <laughs> we work together really well. Yeah, we had to turn down the giant electric cat. <laughs> yes. No, I know. Uh, you know, I want to see a giant electric cat next year, you know. <laughs> ah! As I said before, Caesars IT, Encore, you guys are awesome, source of knowledge that does all the transcoding of the video that hopefully is going to the internet since I'm not checking my phone. Um, the guys that for the past five, six years bring us snacks to the NOC, they worked in the NOC or SOC before and they know how good our lives are. The press goons, they helped us a lot this year, so Melanie and team, thanks so much. Captain Obvious from uh, Caesars IT, we love you. Uh, Micah from Apple, we don't love you. Uh, the machine, and thanks for you guys for behaving on the network as much as you can. Thanks so much.
Sorry, I was mesmerized by those numbers. Uh, okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, so here are all the villages that we have at DEF CON. There's quite a number of them. And as you remember back in the day when uh, Russ Rogers came to me and he said, you know, we got to do something more than just having these speaking tracks. Um, and so he came up with this idea of the village and then quickly the very first village, you can see here, 10th anniversary in hardware hacking village. They were the very first one and they've been keeping it real ever since. Every station was busy and next year we're going to grow more stations for them. Lockpick Village is also in the tenth, I don't know why it's not here, but Lockpick Village is also in its tenth anniversary. And Tool and all the volunteers that make the Lockpick Village awesome, I mean, that's just an incredible learning experience. I remember I was in there and there's like, I don't know, 12, 10 year old girl, and you could tell that she was very skeptical because her dad was there and was kind of trying to force her to do something she didn't want to do. She was kind of like messing around with this lock. And then all of a sudden, like the lock popped, it was like a master lock, and her eyes, the, the lock popped open and her eyes were like, like, <laughs> like, I did that? You mean locks are not secure? You mean I can like take over the world? <laughs> and I was like, mm. <laughs> And that was just like the most immediate feedback. I could watch her like, calculate, calculate, calculate. It's like her perception of the world changed right there. And that was thanks to the villages. And this year there's two new villages that are joining. When we moved from Paris Bally's we were just out of space. We didn't have enough walls. This year we have more walls. We have smaller spaces, more areas that we can break people out into. And so we added two villages. The recon village on open source. Right on. Recon Village really, I mean, you guys were, like, you were not a first year. You showed up and were almost feeling like a, almost like a third year event. And this village, that was really well done. And the Voting Machine Hacking Village, which was a runaway success, we didn't quite expect it to be so crazy, and it was crazy. By the end of the con, every voting machine fell, and that's like <laughs> two and a half days. So this just kind of gives you an idea. And then I also want to call out the ICS village. Um, they weren't here last year, but they're back this year having a great time. So it's just really nice. Even when villages can't make it one year, they can come back. We're really welcoming. And so um, we were constantly on the lookout for new ideas. And we were, get, we were joking around earlier getting ready for this. And, um, and I was saying, you know what? You know, on Sunday we have so few people that buy badges from us on Sunday. We should just close the registration department and stick the badges in a vending machine. <laughs> vending machine hacking village. Because <laughs> we all need potato chips. Okay, um, just some quick statistics. The data duplication village, um, near and dear to my heart. Um, you can see this year uh, we broke last year's record. We've pushed more data. Look in the lower left hand corner. You can see the drive types and their failure rates. I don't know who MediaMax is, but they really need to fix their shit. <laughs> it's like 43% failure rate, you know? And it's too bad that HGST is around 18% failure rate. It's pretty clear that the best ones are Toshiba and Western Digital. Um, anyway, the InfoCon stuff is online as well if you want to download it. I just thought that this community would like enjoy statistics. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pass it off to Grifter here for all the events, contests, and parties, who's going to kind of run through what we've got, and we're going to start uh, calling out some of the winners. Hey, how's it going? Ow. Oh my gosh, DevCon! <laughs> um, so. So this year, new venue, new insanity. Um, so thank you to all of the organizers of villages, events, contests that um, put up with well, all of our bullshit um, and and figuring out the new space. Uh, genuinely, we thank you. Uh, so as far as events, um, we have we have a lot of, of return events here where we have friends of Bill, uh, Be the Match, all those guys um, came back. I think. Um, 
hacker karaoke thought for a minute they weren't an event. Somehow, like a message got lost somewhere. And then three weeks ago, when we said, like, oh, hey, we still have some more space. Does anybody want to do something? They submitted again, even though they'd already been accepted. <laughs> so they were super stoked. Uh, and it was sick. If you weren't if you weren't at Hacker Karaoke this year, it it was crazy. Um, but thank you to all the event organizers. Uh, genuinely, we really uh, had a blast, and we appreciate your efforts. Um, so let's get into contests. That's a lot of contests. Um, so you guys like to do stuff when you're here, you know? Uh, no idle hands, right? Uh, and here's the thing, though. This list. It was just a little bit smaller than last year. So we had a couple of contests that were like, for DEF CON 25, we just want to kick it. And we're just going to hang out and enjoy the show. And so a few contests that have been around for a while um, didn't return, which means we have some openings for contests. So please, if you're interested, email contests at DEF CON.org. Let us know what you want to do. Not today. <laughs> like, like give us a little bit. I plan to sleep for the rest of the week. So, but seriously, hit us up. Tell us what your ideas are. Um, we had we had contests this year, like a, the tinfoil hat contest was something that they just walked up and said, like, "Hey, we got yes over there, tinfoil hat." Like it's just one of those things where we're like, "How the hell have we not had a tinfoil contest and hat contest in 25 years?" And they were like, no, it'll be super simple. They'll just make hats and the best hat wins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right, done. Um, so yeah, tons of great contests. If you were in the contest area, it was always hopping. Obviously, we also have contests that go on the villages that, um, that have a lot of effort put into them as well, so thanks to them. Uh, and then I just want to say to my, uh, my team, thank you to my contest goons. I know they're around here somewhere. Um, and spe yes, yes. Special, special thanks to, to Zant and to Stumper and to Drist uh, for, for handling all the business. Um, and then also, I want to throw out uh, a thank you, not just, not just like to the contest folks, but also a special thanks to Nikita sitting over here. Uh, Nikita helped pull us out of many a hole this year. Um, also, I don't know. I don't know how many people realize. Like N Nikita handles every single submission that comes through DefCon. So if you submit to the call for papers, like she has to deal with your crap. Some of it's crap. Let's just be honest. Um, but a lot of it requires feedback, which means as the review board asks for questions, she has a dialogue back and forth with whoever the submitter is. And so we're talking about a thousand submissions and an additional hundreds and hundreds of contacts thereafter. So can we please get a round of applause for Nikita. <laughs> and Nikita's baby. <laughs> all right, that's enough, sit down. Um, all right, let's get this thing rolling. So, here are our black badge contests uh, for DEF CON this year. We're going to, so we don't announce which contests are going to be a black badge contest until essentially this morning, every Sunday morning. And here's why. Look at that list. You're not all getting into DEF CON free for life. Like, I'm sorry, it's just, it's not a thing. Uh, however, we, we have a few badges that we give out and we don't want it to be something where you know that a certain contest is going to have a black badge and so that's the contest that everybody focuses on and maybe a contest that's new or just starting out gets completely ignored. So at any point we will decide this contest is doing a killer job that they're going to be a black badge contest even if they have no idea they're in the running. Uh, we just pick them out so that you as attendees well, just go do what you love or go learn something new. And we don't have to worry about having new contests that have two people playing it. So just get out there and play the contest that you're going to enjoy, that you'll learn something from, and maybe you'll get into DEF CON free for life. Okay. Um, th also, that means that 
contests sometimes that do get black badges may not have one the next year. I just want to point that out that it doesn't mean that that contest fell in quality or anything. We just, again, we can't give them to the same people every year. So, um, before we get to this, I'm going to let Jeff say a couple of words about the Uber badge. So, Jeff? Yeah. Hey, so, um, because we had our badge construction problem this year, same thing we had a problem with uh, Uber badge construction. And Uber badges are, are pretty awesome. And we had like 10 days to create an Uber badge, which is pretty difficult to do. Um, and so we thought we had a great solution. We had this awesome solution. We figured it out. It went to manufacturing. We got the proofs. We validated the proofs. We approved them. They went to final production. And it got shipped out. FedEx Saturday delivery. And they checked. FedEx overnight normal. So the Uber badges will be here tomorrow at 10 a.m. <laughs> Just in time. And the person who, ch who checked the box wrong realized it immediately, tried to fix it. I guess once you've checked that box, you're done. It's like a blood contract. You cannot <laughs> change your FedEx shipping. Um, so we have one badge. I'm holding it right here. This is the one Uber badge to sh tease you to tease the teams with what they're going to be getting. So what's going to happen is, as the teams win and get acknowledged, everybody exits the left, we're going to record who gets the Uber badge and we're going to send it to you. So hopefully, I'm going to sh hold this and hopefully the camera can put it on the screens if we can video switch. Um, can you switch to me? Please? Because this is really small. And nope. Um, and then hopefully people will be able to take pictures. Nope, no video switching. We even talked to you about this. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so what I'm holding in my hand, <laughs> this is, this is $1,300 of pure gold. <laughs> this is a DEF CON 25 serialized gold uber badge with a platinum metal surround holding it. And they're individually numbered. So it doesn't say Trump on it, no. Um, so I'm going to just kind of put it here. Everybody can like look at it and drool on it. But you will get your own if you've won a black badge contest this year. So I'm going to just put it right here for everybody to drool over. Thank you. Okay. Yoink. Um, so, without further ado, social engineering CTF. I love you, Grifty. Okay, so this year, social engineering capture the flag. We had an amazing turnout. We never had a year like this before. We had over 250 submissions uh, for the SECTF, which was crazy, and 50 videos. Uh, the 14 people we chose got given the gaming industry to keep with the theme of, of DEF CON. Um, so we called 2K, Activision, Blizzard, Bondi, Bethesda, I always say it wrong, Bethesda, Disney, EA, Hasbro, Mattel, Nintendo, Rockstar, Sega, Sony, Ubisoft, and Warner Brother Games were our targets for, um, for the uh, CTF. We had 381 pages of OSINT submitted by our 14 contestants in their three weeks of time doing uh, their gathering. Our second place winner, which is Rachel Toback, give her a round of applause. <laughs> she, <laughs> I, need to lift, I need to lift her up. There we are. Okay, there we go. <laughs> she, um, in her report, she got 21 out of 30 flags. Uh, during her call, she got 28 out of 30 flags. She spent eight, uh, 100 hours preparing for the SECTF and report writing and, and OSINT. Um, it's just, just amazing. Give her, give her a round of applause. That's for her. Okay, and our first place winner, he spent 60 hours preparing his Get over here, Chris. Chris Kurtz. He spent 60 hours repair, preparing his 70-page report. I don't do this for a living. I had to read that. 
Okay. Uh, 60 hours on OSINT. He got 28 out of 30 flags on the report and 21 out of 30 flags in just one call. Just one call. It was amazing. Good job. Thank you. And he gets this awesome one. In addition, everyone who knows me knows I love whiskey, so we had a special bottle of whiskey from Glenn Farkless engraved for him, too. So you get that. Right. And, of course, you get the... Oh, wow. Man, I know you can't see that because they can't switch cameras, but that is beautiful. So there was a black... No, just I'm kidding, kidding. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool if I put a fake one there and actually swiped it? No, not, not cool at all. Okay, I think my two minutes is up. Thank you. Thank you so, Thank much. You so much. It was awesome. Right on. It was a good year. It was a good year, guys. Thank you. See you next year. Love you, Justine. Two more minutes of hugging? All right. Yeah, yeah. A little man. Oh, just okay. keeping it weird. Just keeping, just keeping it, weird. it weird. All right. Uh, up next, this is very high. All right. Up next, crypto and privacy challenge. That's you. <laughs> Hi, wow, the lights are bright up here. Holy crap. Um, wow, so first let me thank DT, Nikita, Zant, and Grifter who have um, been so wonderful to have the Crypto and Privacy Village for the past couple of years and have dealt with me being, you know, o the over organizer. So, you know, herding cats of hackers has you know, been a thing. Um, but this year we had a puzzle um, at, that was designed by Straith and Maya and myself, um, as well as a badge that Carl Kosher put together. And we had a puzzle two years ago and I thought, no one's solving this, like, why do it again? And three weeks after the conference, a team finished it and we sent them their prize. Last year I thought, well, we do all this work, we're not really sure anyone is actually solving this. And the team came back and said, where's your puzzle? And I was like, like, sorry, <laughs> that was cut. Uh, so this year we designed a puzzle and it was quite a challenge. And the same team that won our first year and asked about it our second year uh, won this year. And it is such a pleasure to give them six of our badges as well as a black badge um, and some special gold shirts we made for the winners as well. So thank you, Rot Rot, who solved our Crypto and Privacy Village Challenge. They are just amazing and the reason like, we went extra to design a puzzle this year, so I'm so glad they won. And um, so, yes, thank you. Thank you. Right on. <laughs> oh, man, that's shiny. Yeah. All right. You guys can fight over who gets it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the real challenge. <laughs> We're just DT super trolling the teams this year, so. I, I love you too, he whispered. Um, all right, so from the, uh, from the IOT village, so hopelessly broken. Thanks again for having us back. Really appreciate being here, and thanks everyone that came out to play and participate. In our track zero so far, we have tallied a total of 109 new vulnerabilities, things like buffer overflow and command injection. And for the actual black badge contest, I will let Josh announce the stats on that. Hey, everyone. Uh, so, so Hopelessly Broken, it started out in 2013 with a coworker of mine, he did a research study into routers. He found that everything he looked at was uh, vulnerable to something and he decided, well, why not turn it into a CTF and have it at DEF CON? So uh, we, we've had it since then and uh, last year it was our first time as a black badge contest. Uh, so after that we were like, oh, how are we going to top ourselves this year? Um, but I think we did a really good job. We had 93 teams compete and over half of them scored a flag. So good job, guys. Um, yeah, give yourselves a round of applause.
Um, thanks to everyone who helped out, and um, <coughs> I'll, I'll announce the winners. So, uh, third place we had Team Vert. Second place, <laughs> second place, uh, Team Sakarma, and first place, the winner of the black badge, Team Wolf Emoji. They're gonna let me talk into this microphone. It's crazy. Um, just want to thank uh, Devil's Ivy and Samba Cry for getting us on the board, and the Mirai Botnet for uh, getting IoT security in the you know forefront of normal people's minds. Uh, and thank you all for being here. Up next, uh, from the Packet Hacking Village, Capture the Packet. Super weird hog. <laughs> <laughs> Always got a mess with Griffin. All right. What's up, De uh, DEF CON? Oh, that was so pathetic. Come on. What's up, DEF CON? Yeah. All right. I'm Riverside. My partner in crime, C Docs, couldn't make it. He's back in the village, which takes hours and hours and hours. Um, so we had a ton of hands on stuff in the Pack and Hacker Village, and it takes an army. We had over 130 volunteers help us out, and I just want to thank all of them. They're awesome. Thank you all so much. Let's give them a big hand. One of the things that makes our events and contests that we have going on there, especially Capture the Pack so, uh, so awesome, is our um, Wasp DJ Co., the Wall of Sheep DJ community. And I want to really thank um, Freakocious Yerk and Tense Future. Um, they were awesome. They made it just rock in there. So thank you all, guys. Uh, all right. So, as far as. Capture the Packet, we had over 600 people this year play Capture the Packet. And uh, it was intense, round after round after round, and that's why it took so many volunteers, but it was epic. And uh, the team that won this year with uh, 3,200 points, leaving 1,100 on the board to be got, ooh, uh, <laughs> uh, we're able to get a good chunk of the really intense stuff, but we rolled our own crypto this year, we had insane steganography, exfil from all sorts of different methods, brand new malware that you guys are playing with in, in your real lives, and a whole lot more. So uh, thanks to, uh, especially Packet Sled that gave us that thing. We get these freaking badass laptops for these guys. And thanks to DT and crew, they get a black badge, which is awesome, right? All right. So that is it. I think I got my two minutes. Oh, wait. Let's start with the alphabet. I got two minutes. A, B. No, I'm good. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, everyone. All right, so this next contest is actually one of those situations where, again, they, they never intended to be in the running. They just created something cool, and we heard so much about it over the course of the weekend uh, that we eventually got together with them and said, how about an Uber badge? And they were like, sure. Um, <laughs> so here they are, Telefreak. Okay, uh, so, wow, uh, this is bright up here. Um, on Thursday, the first time at uh, Telefreak for a, a company, in this, or pardon me, the first time at DEF CON for a company happened, and this happens a lot, you know, employees of companies will come to DEF CON and sometimes they'll get a little bit drunk and maybe they'll say too much or, or do something they shouldn't. So Ellingson Mineral Company came to DEF CON on Thursday. They all got really drunk and lost their badges just all around the con area. 
And uh, those badges were actually the entry point to the Telefreak puzzle this year. So uh, we run a puzzle pretty much every year. Last year it was based around old school hacker floppy disks and this year it was based on Freaking. So uh, our winning team um, actually solved the puzzle using only telephones and you know that's one thing that we tried to teach hackers this year because we always have an educational component to the challenge is you don't need Metasploit and Shodan to hack. There's actually tons of stuff out there that you can hack uh, without the tools that many of us use. Uh, so with that, uh, I'd really like to congratulate the psychoholics. They went through an absolutely insane challenge. They dialed into our, uh, they dialed into our system, hacked through three different s departments voicemail boxes, listened to all their voicemails, uh, you know, figured out what was going on in the scenario, literally got a shutdown code for the Gibson, which, um, and, and, you know, they shut it, shut it down over a phone, uh, you know, using a PDU alarm code. So, you know, this was actually, um, something that could be done without a computer, but we did put a 300 baud recording just to mess with people, and they successfully decoded that too. So, uh, congratulations, guys. All right, uh, this next contest, the, if you were around on Friday morning, the line just to get in and get a badge and compete was so big that it caused a crowd control problem. So, like, thanks for that. Um, Welcome. The Darknet Project. The Darknet Project is an interactive game that takes our players through a bunch of challenges that take them through lock picking to web cracking to web exploitation. And this year we had an amazing turnout, lots of players, and um, I'm gonna turn this over to Samosa to talk a little about the next part. So uh, I'm the one responsible for the uh, crowd control problem. We uh, make our contest bigger and better every year. This year we started with our badges. Uh, we moved over a thousand badge kits for our Learn to Solder kit. Um, we had 500 unique players and they completed over the course of three days 9,000 quests. So it was a really big contest this year. So I was on stage last year during the closing ceremony and not as a staff member but as a Darknet winner and the one thing I had to say is that Darknet made me feel like a part of a community and we want to keep this feeling and make everyone feel this way so this year and it's the first day, it's the first year we're doing this, we include the names of three teams that we feel embody the spirit of Darknet onto the next year's badge. And the teams are DC Zia, Stickers, and Tits. <laughs> uh, but, but so Besides the, the first, second, thir um, third players and what they're receiving, we had swages, badges, reputation, experience that was handed out to players, reputation, um, built on the Ethereum chain and some pretty crazy things that were happening. Um, our third place, um, third place, second place, and first place are also receiving a pre-released signed 10th anniversary edition of the Damon written by Daniel Suarez, who sort of inspired the competition. He signed them and he was wandering around the conference. Um, our third place winner was Crexel. Second was Council of Nine. And our third place winner, winner of the Black Badge. First place, was, winner. First place winner was <laughs> Gate Herder. <laughs> Hey guys, so I, I agree with Ohai there that uh, Darknet is amazing, it's fun, it's a community. Uh, I'm a hardware guy, not a software guy, and, and, and I came to Darknet a couple years ago. This was my third year trying. 
because I don't know this stuff. And so I came to learn it, and, and I played hard. And uh, I want to thank, first of all, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Without him, I wouldn't even be here. Second, I want to thank my wife and my family, because without them, I wouldn't be here. And third, I want to thank DC Zia, the guys who brought me into their wings a couple years ago and said, hey, come join us. And uh, I encourage everybody to do it ArtNet next year. Thank you. So Darknet is obviously a big contest that's really important to a lot of us. It wouldn't happen without a whole slew of volunteers working year-round to try to make this whole thing happen. Between designing, kitting, to selling, and then assembling thousand, uh, over a thousand badge kits, we had uh, our badge designers, we have volunteers that help us put all of it together, um, and then HHV allowing us to take over their entire village so that we can solder all of these kits. Thank you, buddy. We appreciate you very much. Um, as Zero A mentioned, uh, we wouldn't be here without all of the volunteers and the thousands of hours they put in to design all of our content, build all of the physical hackables, and integrate with all the other contests that we have going on here at DEF CON. Third, we have Daniel Suarez, the author and creator of the Demon Universe that inspired the Darknet and he's actively involved in everything that we do. And finally, to all of our amazing players, if you participated in Darknet, raise your hand. Everything we do is for you guys, and we look forward to doing more of it next year. Thank you, and we'll see you in July. All right, uh, this next contest uh, is a personal favorite of mine. These guys come with a bunch of mini challenges. It's a CTF, but done in a very unique way. Lots of different skill sets, and if you get stuck on something, you move on to the next challenge, and you're not just out of the game. Uh, one team gave me some feedback. They said, hey, we were going to try to do all of the challenges. And they were like, yeah, we're doing this, we're doing this. And they showed up the next morning, and these guys had created 10 more. So they were like, come at me, bro. Uh, <laughs> Warlock Games. How's everybody doing this afternoon? All right, about ready to get out of here, right? Um, so we uh, had several events this year. We always try to introduce something new. Um, we're always uh, looking for new and innovative ways to get folks involved. Uh, this year we opened up the board, the hands-on downloadable content kind of things, security practitioner, right, malware analysis, packet analysis. Uh, from there we moved into physical security with lock picking and then uh, yesterday we ran uh, essentially a spy room like a, an escape room uh, where contestants had five minutes to go in there and find all sorts of neat spy related stuff uh, which equated to points on the board. Collectively all of that led to our leaderboard. So without further ado, uh, I've got all my teams up here um, and in third place I have team Ambush. In second place I've got uh, team Sophia. And the black badge winner this year is going to be Team PTFS. Uh, hey, uh, I just want to say um, uh, thanks, uh, Warlock Games, DEF CON. It was great, good fun. And uh, thanks to our uh, teammates who can't be here uh, with us right now, early flights and whatnot. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right, so. Thanks to DT, DEF CON, and again, we hope to see you guys again next year. Thank you very much. All right, wireless CTF, where are you at? <laughs> Don't go slow, these are your two minutes. You said stop. I was trying to be good. I was trying to be good. All right, so they told me to talk about nothing but my sponsor. Oh, darn, I was going to steal that. Oh, <laughs> let you guys see it. Oh, the whole time, right? wow. Look at that. Look at that love. That so I was going to say something uh, negative because at DEF CON 15, there were actually three villages that started up. Uh, it was Hardware Hacking Village and Lock Picking Village and the Wireless Village. But to be honest, uh, you guys gave us double the space this year and we packed it and we had more contestants than ever in our game. So I'm just going to say thank you instead. Thank you. That was, this was the best we've ever had and we really appreciate that. So thank you to DEF CON for giving us such a space. So ten years in we decided to do uh, something special, the same thing we always do. We had a big contest, wireless capture the flag with all manner of stuff. We had a bunch of poxag transmissions, slow scan TV. Sorry about that if you decoded it. Seriously. 
Uh, <laughs> we also had a bunch of Wi-Fi challenges, radio challenges. Uh, for the second year in a row, nobody's broken into our walkie-talkies, which is kind of fun for us. So uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun and all kinds of different wireless stuff, and we really look forward to doing this again. So I'd like to uh, thank the 20-ish teams that were playing. Really appreciate that. Um, from new players to old players to returning favorites to returning people that are now banned from the game. Uh, thanks for playing. Uh, third place was Dale's Pale Ales. Uh, second place was the Dipolar Bears. That, that's Dipole, not, you know, anything negative. And then uh, these guys up here, which had to call themselves, What Does the Fox Say? Not only did the vast majority of their points come from literally hunting people down at DEF CON, they did it across Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and software-defined radio. So if you saw weirdos running around with Yagis that were pointing at everybody, it was probably one of these guys because they won almost all of them. Uh, as a matter of fact, this fine gentleman who I guess we'll, we'll go with Justice Beaver, he, uh, he was on the winning team last year. Mind you, he's got a new team more or less behind him, but he was on the winning team last year, so he's officially retiring, whether he likes it or not, because he's joining our ranks. So we were five, and now we are six. So welcome to the team, buddy. All right, first I want to say thank you to my team. Uh, these guys, I could not have done it without them. Uh, everybody contributed no matter what. Um, and I guess the only thing I have to say is, uh, you know, three years ago I was a noob and now I stand up here in front of all of you guys for the second time. So uh, if you have questions, ask anybody, find a mentor, and mentor somebody else. Thank you. All right, from the car hacking village, the car hacking CTF. Yeah, definitely, definitely very bright. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Robert, and actually, I'm I'm Carfucker. And as Carfucker, I'd like to say thank you to everybody who came out to our our village, and thank you to the teams who participated in our CTF. This year, we had 171 teams, a significant number of teams uh, hacking cars. So that was kind of cool. Um, we actually had a actual real live car in our place to hack. Uh, we had a bunch of hardware. Um, so I'll just go quickly through the teams real quick. Um, number three was trash can. Number two, our friends uh, SEC DSM. Yeah, go SEC. They already won a black badge, so that's cool. Um, and I'm going to totally, totally uh, fuck this up. Um, Rab Robin Dieros, uh, Robin Dieros. So close enough. It means stealing shit in Spanish. Um, so it was really close. Uh, the top two teams were exactly 100 points from each other. And this year, the implication of that means that one team gets to take home a truck and the other does not because we uh, decided to give away a truck and a black badge. Yes, a DEF CON truck. It, it's a 2017 DEF CON. Um, we have, if you, if you want to check it out, we'll put pictures up. Um, and uh, if you guys really are interested in the scoreboard, um, here it is. It's right there. <laughs> I'll, zoom, I'll zoom in. It's right there. You guys can see it out to the left. Everybody's got it. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I posted it on Twitter at Car Hack Village. Um, and uh, I guess this is a good time to sort of say thank you to uh, my friends over here and kind of give them the keys to the truck. But I thought, you know what, that's not fun. That's not fun. Why don't I give it to you guys instead? Who wants the keys instead? All right. I'm kidding. That's not the keys. I just fuck with you. Here's the keys. Thanks, guys. And, and real quick, real quick, Sean, Sean wants to say thank you, too. Sean, go ahead. Just wanted to thank everybody for coming in, playing with all our toys, breaking our stuff. We had a great time. And we're going to bring some cooler stuff next year. So thanks. Thanks. All right, uh, these guys, if you've seen their contest, it happens on the contest stage uh, in the contest and events area. I see the Wi Fi cactus walking through. <laughs> you see it, it's a Wi Fi cactus. Um, it's like a shark. Yeah, it was like, oh, okay. Um, 
dun, 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 dun. <laughs> um, so these guys have their contest up on the stage. It's a lot of shenanigans. Uh, these are sanctioned and not unsanctioned shenanigans. And they drink quite a bit. Actually, so much that they ran out of beer 10 minutes before the end of the contest. And we kind of looked at them and went, I, like, we had no reason to think you would drink that much. Um, <laughs> and so uh, let's hear from those guys, Crash and Compile. So yeah, Crash and Compile is basically a ACM style programming contest combined with a drinking game. So we give you a problem, you solve it in code, and you know, if you took the code didn't compile or you don't get the right answer, you have to take a drink. So our we had the hardest year by far. Uh, this bastard created some brutally challenging problems, uh, and we had some amazing teams who uh, uh, competed this year. So. Uh, we had a total of 51 teams try out for our qualification round, and then uh, from there, nine teams go on to the final round. Uh, so our third place winner was uh, uh, Volo Kantz. Second place was Mobius Ring, and then our first place winner is Gerd Your Loins. And so for winning, they get this giant metal D20 made out of 12 gauge steel. It weighs about 14 pounds. Good luck getting it home. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know how many beers they had. I know we drank all of them. <laughs> so, and I guess they get a black guy shoe. That's kind of cool. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, we also made a second one and we auctioned off for the EFF and raised uh, $400 for that. So, thanks everyone. So uh, again, if you guys haven't seen the contest, they have another team on there called Team Distraction, which is supposed to try to get people distracted from what they're coding or looking at. And uh, Nikita joined for a little bit on Team Distraction and pretended to go into labor behind a guy. <laughs> Successfully distracted. All right, uh, this, is the 20th <laughs> this is the 20th anniversary for this contest, 20. Uh, it's one that I actually ran myself for several years back at the Alexis Park. Uh, we love them. They keep it weird, the scavenger hunt. Hi there. Uh, I'm Evil Mofo, and uh, I run the scavenger hunt. Um, so since I winged it a couple times, I, I kind of wrote something to slightly follow. Um, so we keep DEF CON weird. That's our, our goal. And I'm fairly certain we accomplished it this year. Uh, we had uh, three turn-ins of carbonated semen. Three streakers in the contest room. And one marriage. Uh, so I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for a couple of people. Uh, as, as Grifter mentioned, he kind of ran it, but before him came Pinguino, with him came Hectic, Grifter of course, then there's Siviac, and then he handed it off to Salem. He was too busy gooning, so I ran it. Um, but I've, I've taken it over. Um, so, uh, we, we tried our best to invite all the winners in the past. Apparently, my predecessors weren't good at record keeping. So we only got some of them, but we got most of them. Um, and so this year, we had a great competition. We're going to go through the top five, because they were freaking amazing. The fifth place, Naha Dog, came in with two carts worth of items as we were closing the table and had shut down. We had to reopen just for them just to take in their items for a half an hour and it didn't get all through their items. Uh, they came in fifth with 49,978 points with, with some decimal precision. Um, then we had uh, Butterbeer 
in, in my bag swag. Shit. <clears throat> one second. <laughs> Oh, one, I had one job. Fuck it up. I had one fuck. Don't fuck it up. Uh, anyhow, butter beer in my bag, so my swag bag was uh, fourth place, and they, for fuck's sake, there it is. <clears throat> and they came in. They were a two person, a two women team who came to DefCon to play the hunt. Wait for it, wait for it. They left on Saturday at 10.15 or so. In the morning, they came in fourth place with 43,815 points. They were on trajectory to win, but they had to catch their flight. They fucked it up. They fucked it up. Um, third place goes to Neg9 with 46,778 points. Get the fuck up here, the quickness. Uh, the second place team was Team America. Um, America. A three woman team. And, and they, we, we, we keep telling them that they should have. Joint forces. Not my problem. Um, and finally, oh, did I not? Oh, they got 96,500 points. And first place, first place, and the black badge goes to Temple OS Fan Club. With 101,404 points. And a chicken. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah! Woo! Uh, thank you very much. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Good job, guys. Good job. I told you they would keep it weird. Hold on one second. What? So I, uh, I'm not a first time speaker. I, I, you don't I'm get not, to interrupt I'm me. I'm not giving you. I, I, I told him that if he went past two minutes, I was going to put him in a ditch and use his black badge for hookers and blow later. So if you want to play along at home with the next play. Awkward. Um, all right. Uh, these guys were right center in the middle of the contest area this year. We put them there for a reason. Uh, it's always entertaining and out of control hack fortress. Thank you, Grifter. PW Crack said I could go as long as I want, so if the fires could bring me the Everclear, that'd be appreciated. Um, Bob's gonna kill me. Uh, so this started out actually as uh, I think in uh, DEFCON 19, I got scheduled for the 10 a.m. slot uh, at uh, Sunday, um, and I decided to make it exciting. And I had a LAN party that I tried to organize at nine o'clock um, beforehand, and like four people showed up with two laptops, so it wasn't a very good LAN party. Um, and we decided that what was interesting is the audience really enjoyed watching it. So we thought, well, we should do something kind of hacker oriented. We already had uh, Hacker Halo back at ShmooCon in DC. So we took Hacker Halo and Team Fortress 2 and jammed them together into these kind of 30 minute hacker TF2 frenetic round based things. Um, and somewhat inspired by the ghetto hackers um, and their badass crate that they used to bring all their, uh, oh, thank you. It's not ever clear, but it'll work. Um, by the ghetto hackers and their badass crate that they used to have in the middle of this CTF room, we brought in our own Hack Fortress crate. It was like eight feet tall and wobbled around and shit. Um, but that was uh, six years ago. So we've been doing Hack Fortress now for six years. Uh, it's just TF2 and little bite sized hacking uh, competitions, like three to 10 minute things. Uh, it's fun to watch. This year, for the first time, we streamed on Twitch. Uh, we had a few hundred people watching on Twitch. Jakku and Cisco, uh, the man with the beard there, were doing the live stream. Uh, so that was cool. So if you're into Twitch and like under 25, because I guess you have to be to use Twitch, um, it's. Sorry, old gamers. Um, first, I'd like to thank the staff, um, all the uh, uh, Hack Fortress staff. They do it both here and at ShmooCon. They have to make new challenges every year. They do a great job. Thanks, Hack Fortress staff. Woo! I'm sure it was clean. Um, I, I can kill all the great. I will kill it. Thank you. Um, and then finally, so. Uh, uh, 
final round uh, came down to easy baby and team not ready for this. Uh, team not ready for this one for the third fucking year. So, uh, they're ready for this. They're absolutely ready for this. The explanation point comes off next year. So congratulations, team not ready for this. And, and uh, Batman, you want to do your dance? Can you do it real quick? Yeah, man, that's what put him over the top was that dance right there. So thank you very much. All right, and of course, last but certainly not least, capture the flag. Good evening. The last five years of DEF CON Capture the Flag have been an incredible ride for us, for our competitors, and for the larger DEF CON community. After five years, dozens of challenges, hundreds of binaries, and tens of thousands of hours of work, we're passing the torch to the next organizing team, whoever they may be. There are still amazing opportunities to grow Capture the Flag and with the skill and creativity of everyone in this room, we're sure the contest will end up in capable hands that will raise the bar even higher. We'd like to thank everyone who made the last five years possible. The Dark Tangent and the entire DEF CON staff for five years of incredible support. The DEF CON goons for keeping the Capture the Flag room safe and drama free for five years straight all of our competitors for five years of excitement, and most importantly, the DEF CON attendees and CTF players around the world for five years of this incredible game. We couldn't have done this without all of you. <laughs> Hi everybody. So uh, last year I stood in front of a room that was a little smaller than this one and uh, I announced that this year we would be running the DEF CON Capture the Flag on an architecture of our design. About six months, or I guess four months ago DT called me and he was like, hey, are you sure that the uh, teams at the CTF are going to be able to uh, do something interesting in the 72 hours of our game. I was like, oh yeah man, I'm sure, sure they got this. Uh, I'm happy to report that the teams not only succeeded but they absolutely crushed it. This year's game used the clemency architecture, an all new 27 bit with 9 bit bytes computer designed by our own Lightning. Oh, also Middle Indian. It is great. <laughs> Thursday morning we released it to the public along with a processor manual, an emulator, and a debugger. And that was it. Friday morning the teams came to play and the amount of work they did to build the tooling they needed to succeed in our game was incredible. We had teams with item modules overnight, binary ninja modules overnight. Some team built a uh, clemency to ARM transpiler and then used an ARM decompiler to lift up to C. It was, it was incredible. We, we didn't expect anything like that. So I think it's fair to say that the teams have ri er, risen to the challenge and developed new tools for reverse engineering, patching, and attacking our crazy custom architecture. As usual, the winning team for the DEF CON Capture the Flag will receive eight Uber badges and eight black leather jackets. What's that? We hope the new organizers, whoever they will be, will continue to honor the tradition of inviting the first place team back to defend their title next year.
In third place, from uh, China, we had A0E. In second place, from Taiwan, we had HitCon. And I'm almost tired of saying it at this point. <laughs> but the winners of the DEF CON Capture the Flag this year was PPP, the Plaid Parliament of Poning. Well, I'm a little sick, but uh, first off, thank you so much to Legit BS. When we heard they were doing a custom architecture, we pretty much thought that's going to fucking fall on its face. There's no way it's going to work. And we showed up on Friday and everything ran. It was incredibly smooth, especially as far as CTFs go. Um, all the teams were attacking us, all the teams were patching stuff, everyone had tooling. It was incredibly impressive. So. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. What was your secret sauce? A lot of hard work. I don't know. Nothing we can yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. So, as uh, it was alluded to, um, we are also going to acknowledge the incredible hard work that uh, LegitBS has put in for five years. And so, um, not everyone knows this, but we're going to give all the ten core organizers, they will all get black badges. <laughs> so they have, I believe they've advan helped advance the state of Capture the Flag and just really kept it true to what we want at DEF CON, which is just a really offense, defense driven head-to-head -head combat kind of game. And so with that, I really thank LegitBS and we're going to rely on them to help vet the next team that we accept. So thank you very much. And you guys just, you guys knocked it out of the park. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we're going to open a call for organizers for Capture the Flag. Um, we're going to do it in two weeks and we're going to try to select an organizing team before the end of the year. Uh, and we'll, just like the last call for organizers, we'll provide a lot of information. You'll be able to interact, ask questions with legit BS and past organizers. Um, and so uh, we hope to really create the evolution of this. And so if you're interested or you know people that are interested, um, give some serious thought to potentially organizing. Uh, or encouraging your friends to organize the next generation of Capture the Flag. All right, what is next? We thank them. We thank them. Oh, my super secret announcement. Um, before we do my super secret announcement, for those of you who have been coming for a while, I always save my weird secret announcements for last. Just because you guys are the most hardcore, you've waited the whole weekend, you're probably exhausted and you're just toughing it out and you're supporting us and you're providing the energy. And so I always like to reward you with a secret announcement. <laughs> so one of the announcements is everybody always asks, well, how many people came? How big are we? Is, like it's some sort of contest. Um, and it's really hard for us to tell because um, we don't really go through all the numbers until next week, but we have some indicators. And so I am guessing at this point, I was projecting, if you saw me on Twitter, I was um, projecting a certain amount of growth. I thought 6%. And 6% of a large number is a large number. <laughs> and we were at about 20%. Whoa. Which was pretty awesome. And so we probably broke all in probably about 25,000 people. <laughs> all right? So 
That's a lot of cats to herd. Um, and I want to just invite CJ to come up. This is a new thing we're going to start doing every year to just give you a little bit of transparency in what goes on behind the scenes, just some rough numbers with what we have to deal with every year. So, CJ? All right. Thanks, everyone. A big part of this is for us, keeping you guys safe is one of the most important things we do. We take complaints about harassment, we take people behaving badly really seriously. We want to encourage people to come forward and this idea of transparency is people have asked us to be open about what's going on, so we're going to do that. We're going to show you what kind of things we're dealing with and we're going to welcome advice from the community to try and improve things. So this year, out of 25,000 people, we had seven reports of harassment, nine reports of medical uh, situations. And they ranged from someone who sprained their ankle while skipping, uh, and <laughs> an unfortunately named person called Skippy. Um, there were three thefts, one vicious dog, three adorable dogs, <laughs> five cases of vandalism, which included some bright spark who thought he could put a piece of paper on one of the Caesar's Palace walls and then write on it with a Sharpie. Guess what, Brainiac? It goes through. Please don't do that again, because Caesar's is going to hunt you down if you do. Uh, there were two cases of trespass on property. These were people who decided to go back of house just like it's the most stupid thing possible to go and hack an ATM on the casino floor because it's got the most cameras on the planet pointing at it. The same goes for back of house. They have a lot of cameras there and they recognize who's supposed to be there. It's pretty much a fast track to being kicked out. So the results of all of this, we had four people transported to hospital, uh, including one person who had a large piece of masonry fall on his head. Uh, we had three people who were banned for life, and we had two people who were unbanned for life. <laughs> we're going to be changing things up a lot. There's going to be uh, a few new processes and a few announcements over the next year about how we're going to work to make things more inclusive, more safe, and more diverse. And one of the first things I want to start with is, please, if you want to help, come, apply to my team. We are looking for all of you. I want this team, the goons, the guys in red shirts who run around, as well as the other staff in DEF CON who all run around, to be honest, uh, I want it to look like you. This team should represent the community because the community serves the community. Thank you. Fantastic. Okay, we also have, uh, in the years past, we used to try to run around and calculate the amount of donations that you all give to various groups and organizations and nonprofits. And this year, there were so many groups uh, and so much fundraising just out of your own pockets, supporting the causes that you wanted to support. Um, that it was too hard for us to get an aggregate number about how much giving actually occurred. But to Mark's point about community, I mean, we, we really are a community. And I want to invite up um, one of the original groups that we donated to, the EFF, uh, Kurt. And he's just going to talk a little bit about this process and how well uh, the community has been supporting them. Thank you. Thank you very much. This has been a we're all so glad to be back here in, the, in this community. It is such a generous community, and this year has been an amazing year for fundraising. I want to thank this community for contributing. People who came by the booth, became members, renewed their memberships, 
got our t-shirts, got our stickers, those who contributed through the many uh, fundraisers like Mohawk Con, like buying the Bender's Badge, uh, contributing through the Beard Contest, and so many other fundraisers out there. This year has been our best ever, and thanks to the generosity of this community, we have raised over $113,000 we're going to use to fight for your rights online. We love you so much. And we will we'll see you next year. Thank you again. Right on. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Kurt. Thank you. Right on. Okay, so now we're into the final stage boss round where um, I have made the decision to give you my super secret announcement. Um, I've been agonizing over this for a while because it's kind of uncharted, uncharted territory for me. It's also uncharted territory for DEF CON. And, um, you know, I've been really thinking about that, that we're really a global community. And if you look, I just raise your hand in the audience or cheer or whatever if you're not from the United States. <laughs> right? And if you guys saw the sign that was posted on promenade level with the global map and you saw where everybody came from, right? That was a. Wow, that was a brilliant idea right there. I want to get a picture of that before you guys disappear because it is amazing. I want a picture of that. And it was a global map where people would mark where they're from. And I really thought that, you know, it's getting harder and harder maybe for people to come to the states. And we're, and we're a global community. And I've been thinking about potentially growing DEF CON. And I even um, dropped a little hint in the program about Three years ago we did a Tribeca Film Festival and we brought the hacking villages to a completely new audience, filmmakers and writers and actors. And we did that two years in a row and it was amazing. And then last year we seriously investigated bringing the hacking villages to another country. Um, and that really made me think that, you know what, I should just try a beta event. I should just try taking the kind of culture of DEF CON, the hacking villages, and going to a new location and trying to build community and where would I do that? So yeah, we've, we've got a location and I'm going to bounce it off you and you tell me what you think of it. But if I am, I am finding incredible energy, I'm finding incredible creativity and no kidding, I'm not joking, <laughs> I'm going to try a DEF CON beta in Beijing. And, you know, if the hackers can't come to us, the hackers will go to them. And we're going to create or help build and foster a global community of these kinds of beliefs, of these open exploration, the discovery, the puzzle solving, and, uh, and I could fall on my face and it could blow up and it could be a disaster or it could be an awesome beginning of a new chapter. So we're going to find out. So if you're interested, if you run a contest or a village and you're interested maybe in traveling overseas, um, or if you're a speaker and you think you've got something up your sleeve and you want to go speak, um, you will see a call for papers and call for contests in the next couple of weeks. So that is my super secret announcement. Thanks for sticking around for it. And I'd love to get your feedback. And with that, I'd like to call DEF CON 25 to close.